So I've been trying to figure out what the hell this meant for like the last six months. This stiv, I would see stiv show up in the 13Fs and everything like that. And I had no idea what it, what it meant. I couldn't find anything on it, but I've just figured it out. So this is going to break down the Evergrande narrative. I finally am able to reverse engineer the whole thing. So let's go ahead and take a look. Short-term investment vehicles. And by the way, PowerPoint did an amazing job with this, uh, <laughs> this visual here. Good job. So STIV is what they show up as in the 13Fs, and they're often found with money market funds as they stand for short-term investment vehicles. And it was something that I would see show up in institutional reporting in 13Fs and things like that, but could never find anything on them until today. So this, this came out on the 13th of December. It's the NASDAQ Fund Network NFN Web Service Reports. Yeah, I'd, I had to find it in something such as this. Now, when you look into the document, you get confirmation that this is exactly what it is. It's a short-term investment vehicle. So, as we all know, the repo market, that is literally a short-term investment vehicle. That's, by definition, what a repo is, especially in the overnight. So, I'm pretty excited that I found out what that is, because now I can put together the works, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain what prompted this thought process. So, I was looking through the... 13 F's for GME and AMC today as typical and I came across Vanguard Total World Stock ETF. They just added a position as of the 30th of December and this is it right here about 27,998 shares I, I did verify this with Vanguard obviously what you see on the screen is Fintel superimposed on top of Vanguard's website so I have cross-referenced everything So if you look at their holdings on their own website, you see they have three market liquidity funds, but they all have different QCIP numbers, right? Which is interesting to me. They take up about 39% or 0.39%, 0.13% and 0.15% respectively. And this is the short term reserve, okay? Short term reserve, STIV, everything's checking out. We're all on the same page, hopefully. And I'll link this in the description if you wanna take a look. So they have 9,251 equity holdings, um, two of which are including uh, Tencent Holdings, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, all the big names, GameStop, AMC, all that good shit. 9,251. That's absurd. So we now know that Vanguard, BlackRock, and Fidelity are heavy players in the repo market. We've seen that all year long. So I want you to follow along with what I'm about to show you. We just confirmed Vanguard Total Stock ETF, that that's an ETF, is stuffed with three stivs, which we know are short-term investment vehicles, and also holds over 9,000 different positions. So now, what you see on the screen here is Title 12 CFR. Um, this is the legislation, law, rule, whatever you want to call it. For foreign, international, and supranational entities referred to in 204.2, C1, IV, E, and 204.8. And again, this is foreign, international, supranational entities referred to in this rule. This is a rule. It is law. So I'm going to put some puzzle pieces together and just try to follow along. So we're going to leave this here and we're going to highlight supranational. Now we're going to go to the OFR or the Office of Financial Research which is a US money market fund monitor website. It's a legit website. It's a .gov website. This is publicly available information. So we're gonna look at the US money market fund monitor. Now, once we do that, we see obviously the biggest three players, Fidelity, Vanguard, BlackRock, right there near the top with JP Morgan. So what we can do now is we can go to details on Vanguard and drill down on it which is exactly what we're gonna do. Once you do that, you can see the list of their funds as far as money market funds. There's quite a bit of them. Once you drill down further into the details here for the Vanguard Market Liquidity Fund, if that rings a bell. It should, because we just talked about it like 30 seconds ago. So you take the Vanguard Market Liquidity Fund now and you drill down on the country data that that fund is purchasing or receiving its uh, 
assets from. And when you do that, but before, I'm gonna confirm real quick, we're on the same page. Vanguard Market Liquidity Fund was the three holdings we just saw at the beginning of this presentation with the short-term reserve. And we can confirm that it is the same fund. So this is the fund in the repo. So now we have a list of countries, right? What do you see on here that would be of significance? Singapore. So when you drill down on Singapore, then you can see the type of credit that it is. Well, when you do that, guess who the counterparty is? DBS Bank. Do you know who DBS Bank is? They were founded in Beijing, China. They are still in, in China. They have been the ones pumping the news articles all year long about how they don't think Evergrande is going to be a problem. Well, I wouldn't either if I had a bailout from Vanguard and the Fed and everyone else. So, yeah, they are in with financial company commercial paper. That's the asset type. Look at the time horizon here. You can't, I mean, this has literally just been proven to you on screen. Vanguard holds three liquidity funds that are short-term vehicles. They have financial company commercial paper from DBS Bank, who, as you can see right here, I would claim there's no problem either because it was taken away magically by the bailout. Now, this is one of the news headlines. DBS Singapore's biggest lender has no exposure to Evergrande and doesn't see the crisis as a systemic risk to the region's banking industry. The, the CEO said in a Bloomberg television interview on Monday. Well, he doesn't think that because, again, they got bailed out. And, oh yeah, China Evergrande says it is arranging payment for unpaid commercial paper. But they don't know who. It's Vanguard. It's right here. They have to pay this back. Guess when it expires this month? Does this mean Evergrande's going to cause MOAS? F no. Anyone pushing that is an idiot. Now, this is where it gets crazy. The entities referred to in this rule that I brought up at the beginning of this, of this presentation are the Asian Pacific Council, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, the Bank of Taiwan, and the Korea Exchange Bank. This is how they're able to F you legally. It's written in a law. This is the law right here that's saying they can do this and there's nothing you can do about it. The Fed's the problem. So on the left-hand side, we have reality. And on the right-hand side, we have the narrative. So supranational means having power or influence that transcends national boundaries or governments. Supranational law. The Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN, is a regional group that promotes economic, political, and security cooperation. Security, cooperation, political cooperation, and economic cooperation. Economic cooperation among its 10 members. Which, you know, one of them has to be Singapore. So... If you want to keep pretending that something crazy is going to happen with Evergrande, it's not. And I would like to see any, any evidence that goes against what I just showed you. Because you only get this. This is all you ever 